The Philharmonic Gets Dressed by Carla Cuskin. Illustrations by Mark Simon. It is almost Friday night. Outside, the dark is getting darker and the cold is getting colder. Inside, lights are coming on in houses and apartment buildings. And here and there, uptown and downtown and across the bridges of the city, 105 people are getting dressed to go to work. First, they get washed. There are 92 men and 13 women. Many take showers, a few take baths. Two men and three women run bubble baths, and one man reads in the tub while the cat watches. One woman sits in the bubbles and sings. When they have finished washing, they dry. They use big towels and little towels and a lot of dusting powder. All the men shave except for three who have beards. Two trim. Then, when the 105 people are showered and bathed, shaved and toweled, dusted and dry, they put on their underwear. The men wear undershorts or briefs. Some of the men wear t-shirt undershirts with sleeves. Some wear undershirts without sleeves. And a few of the 92 do not wear undershirts at all. But night and the temperature are falling. And one thin man buttons up a suit of long-sleeved, long-legged underwear. All the men put on black socks. There are short socks and long socks and fancy silk socks that have decorations called clocks. Some of the men wear leg garters to keep the long socks from falling down around their ankles. The 13 women put on different kinds of complicated underwear, under pants, pantyhose or stockings, petticoats or slips, and brassieres. One woman, whose feet always freeze, pulls on wool socks over her stockings. When all the men have their underwear on, they get their long-sleeved white shirts and button them up. Then they put on black trousers. Forty-five men stand up to get into their pants. Forty-seven sit down. Each pair of pants has a shiny black stripe down the outside of each leg. The men zip zippers and button a button or two. One man has wavy black hair streaked with white like lightning. He puts on a very soft white shirt with ruffles down the front. It has special cuffs that fasten with cufflinks. This man hooks a wide black cloth belt around his waist. The belt is called a cummerbund. None of the other men wear belts with their pants. They button suspenders onto the waistlines of their pants and snap the suspenders over their shoulders. Eight women dress in long black skirts. They wear black tops, sweaters, or blouses. Four women put on long black dresses, and one wears a black jumper over a black shirt. A few of the women put jewelry on, a necklace, earrings, but no bracelets. Bracelets would get in the way when they're working. All the men put on black bow ties. Some tie them on in front of the mirrors. Some stare into space and tie them. The thin man whistles a tune as he ties his tie on. Twenty-seven men clip on ties that are already made into bows. The man with the wavy black and white hair, the ruffly shirt, and the cummerbund ties on a very big white bow tie. It looks like a white bat. No one else has a tie like his. He slips on a white vest and then a black jacket that is short in the front and long in the back, where it divides in two, like black beetle wings. The jacket and pants are called tails. Tonight, all the other 91 men put on tuxedo jackets. These are black, too, with shiny satin lapels. But they do not have that beetle wing back. 
When all the men and women are completely dressed in black and white, they get ready to go out. They put on overcoats, jackets or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs. Then almost everyone picks up a case. The cases are different shapes and shades of black and brown. The man with the dark wavy hair with the white lightning in it, the ruffly shirt, cummerbund, and bow tie that looks like a white bat, picks up a very thin leather briefcase. No one else has a case like his. All the 105 men and women say goodbye. Goodbye to mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, or friends, children, dogs, birds, a cat, whoever's staying at home. Then they walk out of 105 doors into 105 streets, and there they take cabs, cars, subways, or buses to the middle of the city. The man with the black and white wavy hair wears a black coat with a velvet collar and a white silk scarf. He steps into a very long car that is waiting for him outside his apartment building. While the driver drives, the man opens his case and looks at some papers. He sings a little and hums. At 8.25 on Friday night in the middle of the city, 104 people walk onto the big stage in Philharmonic Hall. They have left their overcoats, jackets, or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs, backstage in dark green metal lockers. They have left their cases in different shapes and shades of black and brown back there, too. Now 101 of the men and women are carrying the musical instruments that were in those cases. Three people do not carry instruments. They are the harpist who plays the harp and the two timpanists who play the kettle drums and smaller percussion instruments, the cymbals, a gong. These instruments are too heavy to carry around. They are already on the stage. There are 102 chairs on the stage and two stools. Near each of these, there is a music stand with sheets of music on it. The 104 people take their seats. The double bass players sit on stools. Everyone turns to the first page of music. It is a white page covered with black lines and musical notes. The man with black wavy hair lit with white enters. He walks to the front of the stage and steps one step up onto a box called a podium. There he can be seen very clearly by the 104 people on the stage and by the hundreds of people in the audience. The audience applauds. The man bows. He is the conductor, the leader of the orchestra, and he holds a stick in his hand. It is called a baton, which is French for stick. The conductor raises the baton in the air. Way up on the ceiling of Philharmonic Hall, six chandeliers sparkle silently. The conductor brings the baton down, and the hall, which is as wide and long as a red velvet football field, fills with music. The music floats and rises. It sings and dances from violas, violins, cellos, double basses, flutes, a piccolo, bassoons, clarinets, oboes, French horns, trumpets, trombones, a tuba, a harp, drums, cymbals, chimes, and one thin silver triangle. It is 8.30 on Friday night and the 105 men and women dressed completely in black and white have gone to work, turning the black notes on white pages into a symphony. They are the members of the Philharmonic Orchestra, and their work is to play beautifully.